Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another goal making video. Now, this video is going to be my top five preferred professions for Shadowlands as of 9.1. Now, this video is going to be geared to beginners. So, if you are somebody who, let's say, only has one character, or you're starting to get your alt army built up and you want to focus on certain professions, but you're not exactly sure which one you should start with, this is kind of that video for you. Now, of course, if you are somebody who has all the professions already and have all the alts that you need, but you're not exactly sure what to invest your most time into, hopefully this video can give you a little bit of an idea of exactly what I personally think is the best, and you can also make your own opinion as well. Also, one last quick thing before we get into this tier list, each profession will be broken up into different ideas. The first thing is that I'll be covering the total cost to actually level up the profession, and the actual crafting cost for the leveling up will be based on the NA region average. So if you are an EU player, you might see these different numbers or these numbers might be a little bit drastic to you. But that is just because this is the NA region average. So you can, of course, calculate this by yourself. It shouldn't be too off unless maybe it's about lightless silk and you guys have a little bit of a different lightless silk price than us. So you might have to calculate that by yourself. But the actual crafting cost of leveling up will be based on NA region average. And also all of the estimated profits every two weeks that I'll be talking about is based on my own experience. Now I am on a medium pop server on the NA region. So everything you'll be seeing is kind of, I guess, in the lower terms of things if you are looking at a bigger gold maker, just due to the fact that most people are going to be on high pop realms. However, of course, that brings more competition. But in general, all of the estimations that you'll see will be based on my medium pop server. And of course, I will go into that as well. But, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy and we will get straight into this list. So we'll be starting at the bottom of my tier list and going to the number one slot. Now, of course, these are going to be based on my own opinions. However, the first profession that we're going to be looking in is leatherworking. Now, the reason why I put leatherworking on this list is because the crafting cost to level up this profession is actually pretty low. On screen now, you will exactly see the price breakdown of the leveling up cost, but you just need desolate leather, pallid bones, callus hide, curing salt, as well as a little bit of penumbra thread. And right now, it can cost you about 4,700 gold in order to level up this profession. So 5,000 gold around it up, and that is pretty low for leveling a whole profession. Now, of course, this is going to be only Shadowlands related things. So this is leveling up just in Shadowlands. But in general, 5k is pretty low. This is going to get you all the way to the max level that you need for your leatherworking. And 5k is a pretty nice investment. Now, the reason why this is on the tier list is because the crafted gear that you can craft with leatherworking is probably one of the best. Not only are you able to craft leather armor, you can also craft male armor, so you actually kind of get two in one. For example, tailoring or blacksmithing, you can only craft one set, so you can either craft cloth or plate. But with leatherworking, you kind of get best of both worlds while you get two different sets, so you can actually sell more crafted armor. And of course, you do have the three marks that makes you a ton of gold. Now, for all the beginners out there, you're going to be wanted to focus on novice gear. The reason for that is because all you have to do is level up the profession, which you will be doing no matter what. And at leveling up that profession, you will unlock the novice crafters marks. You just pair that with the green and the blue gear that you also get when you level up. And then you can sell these pieces for a premium. Generally, for me, crafting a novice piece of gear costs me anywhere between, let's say, 80 to 100 gold on the high end, and I'm selling these pieces anywhere between 500 to even 1,000, even 2,000 gold if it's a blue piece of gear. So the profit margins are pretty big on this. Once again, the only thing you have to do is actually level up the profession. And of course, if you are somebody who has a level 60 and is a little bit more into the current content, so you do Corthia. Once you hit Honored with the Death's Advance, you can pick up the Crafter's Marks 3, which will be a little bit more expensive to craft. However, they are selling for lots of gold. Currently on my server, I can sell pieces anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 gold each for these Crafter's Marks 3 gear. And then lastly, if you get to Tier 4 with the Archivist Codex, which is once again just Corthia Reputation, you can craft the Chained Isles pieces, 
which is kind of a step above the Crafters Marks 3. And on people's server, I've seen them be selling for like 25k. Currently on my server, they only sell about 12 to 15,000. However, I've also seen people sell them for upwards to 30,000. I have a lot of reports from people saying that they've crafted this chained aisle gear with blacksmithing, tailoring, and leatherworking, and even jewel crafting. And they have made 1 to 3 million gold within this first week, and that's the first time they've ever done that. So this crafted gear is just very, very good. It's really easy to get into. Once again, leatherworking is very, very cheap. And you also have a little bit of bonus items to add to the crafted gear, which is your desolate armor kits. Now, there are two armor kits. The one that I'm going to highlight is the desolate one, and the reason for that is because you get it as you level up the profession. And these are normally pretty profitable on most servers, and they're pretty cheap. So, all it requires is a little bit of desolate leather and a little bit of thread, and to craft them anywhere between, let's say, 40 to 50 gold on my server, and I can sell them for anywhere between 80 to 100 gold. So the price margin isn't huge. Now I can make about, let's say, a 30 gold profit every time I sell one. However, you know, if you sell 100 of them, then that turns into a lot of gold. So these are very, very easy, very cheap to make, very cheap investment. However, they do sell pretty fast. And lastly, we do have one item which hasn't been talked about a lot, which is the mount equipment. Now, specifically for Shadowlands, there is the Comfortable Rider's Barding, which is the one I wanted to talk about. And personally, so far, I've been selling about 10 bardings every one to two days. And on my server, currently, the crafting cost is about 140 gold. So, taking 140 gold, I am selling this item anywhere between 600 gold on average. And I've also had a few sales at the 1800 gold mark because it has, because it was reset. So that makes my profit margins anywhere between 460 gold all the way up to 1660 gold. And like I said before, we are selling about 10 every single day to two days, which brings us in about 4600 gold on the low end and about 16,000 gold on the high end. So just these bardings themselves, I basically just make back the crafting cost of leveling up the profession within one to two days by just selling these bardings. So... That is definitely a very simple item you can craft as well. And that is basically it for leatherworking. And that is my number five slot on this list. The next profession that we're going to be talking about is alchemy. Now, the reason why I have alchemy actually pretty low on this list is because how much it costs to level up. Now, I would count this as kind of the medium leveling up cost. As you can see, once again, on screen, there will be a breakdown using the NA averages. You need Death Blossom, Rising Glory, Marrow Root, Widow Bloom, and Vigil's Torch. And depending on what day you're trying to level this, on reset day, it should probably be a lot more expensive than, let's say, maybe a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, depending on your region. But on average, it's going to cost about 15,000 gold to level. Now, 15,000 gold on itself is not too much, but if you are somebody who is just starting out, 15,000 gold can be a lot to just try to level up alchemy. Also, another downside to this is that whenever you are actually leveling up alchemy, the potions that you have to create in order to get the most effective leveling method, a lot of them sell for very, very cheap and are just not profitable. So out of that 15,000 gold invested, you're not going to get a lot of it back because you're making a lot of the quote-unquote useless potions. But in general, the reason why you want alchemy is, like I said, which is just selling potions. The big ones are the spectral flasks of power. Then we also have the spectral strength and intellect potions, and there's also a few mana healing potions, and then you also have your oils. But in general, you're just going to be wanting to sell all of the profitable potions that you can, in the last two weeks, I have sold 691 potions, almost 700 potions I have sold in the last 14 days, and currently I'm making anywhere between 50 to 100 gold profit per item sold. So in total, on the low end, selling that 691 for 50 gold each, that'll be about 35,000 gold. And if I'm selling them for 100 gold profit, that brings my total to about 69,000 gold. So yes, this is a profession which you are going to have to have some income to actually invest with. However, once you start selling, you should see a lot more profit come in. 
as you can see in the last two weeks, I have sold about 691 items, which is actually kind of on the low end. However, it's still really good. I mean, on the low end, you are doubling how much you invested into alchemy. And on the high end, you are multiplying it by four. So alchemy is very good, especially if you have the gold to invest with. If you're looking for a profession that's a little bit more steep, but you can also see a lot more profit margins. But alchemy is probably one of the best. And we are going to move on to the third profession. Now, the third profession that I have, which everybody should get no matter what, is cooking. Now, straight off the bat, the reason why everybody should get cooking is because it does not take up a primary slot. As you guys know, you can only have two primary professions on each character at a time, so you can only have alchemy and inscription on one. Then you have to get blacksmithing and leatherworking on another one, and you cannot have, let's say, blacksmithing, leatherworking, and tailoring all on the same character. However, there are three secondary professions which you can get on every single character, no matter your primaries, which is cooking, archaeology, as well as fishing. Now, of course, archaeology is not really meant for gold making unless you're trying to farm the vials of the sands, which is just a mount. And of course, fishing is more of gold farming, so I'm not really going to talk about that either. But cooking, on the other hand, is something that you should pick up on one character at the very least. The reason for this is, like I said before, it does not take up a slot, so there's really no reason not to pick it up. And you can make a ton of profit with it. And just another bonus is that the leveling up cost is so cheap. Once again, on screen, as you can see, you actually need a lot of items to level this up. You need a lot of different meats as well as a lot of different fish. However, they are all super cheap. As you can see, you're buying fish for 20 silver. And then the most expensive thing you're going to be buying is about 25 gold each. But in total, that is only going to cost you around 1,300 gold. So less than 2,000 gold to level up this profession. So... If you go out and do one calling on your main character, you will have enough gold to level up cooking. So cooking is one of those things that if you do not have it, there is no excuse. You should go level this up. It is so easy. And the reason why you want this is because feast and the large meals are very, very easy and very, very profitable to sell. Everybody who is raiding currently or doing mythic pluses or anything like that, they are going to want to buy themselves meals and that's the food that they can eat to gain a little extra primary stat for them as they do their runs and also all of the guild members are also going to want to pick up feast so they can supply their guild right before they start doing a boss run so that is the two best items or two best types of items that you can sell with cooking and in the last two weeks on my server i have sold 1,308 items. Most of these are just large meals. Some of them are feast, but in total, I can make anywhere between about 20 to 60 gold profit per item sold, which is the large meals. So on the low end, selling 1,300 items at 20 gold, that is about 26,000 gold. And on the high end, selling the 1,300 for 60 gold apiece, that is 78,000 gold. So Cooking is probably the best things you can do. Like I said before, crafting cost to level this thing up is about 1,300 gold. And then in the last two weeks, I have earned almost 80,000 gold in profit. So turning, you know, less than 2,000 into almost 80,000 is absolutely insane in a two weeks period. And that is why cooking is going to be your best friend. But we're going to be moving on into the second spot of this tier list. So the second spot on this list is actually going to be enchanting and the reason for that is because enchanting goes very very well with the top profession so that probably gives you guys a little bit of a hint of what that top profession is going to be on my list but I do believe enchanting is a very very good profession for beginners. The reason for this is because the crafting cost isn't too expensive now it's going to be kind of in the alchemy range. As you can see on screen, it's going to cost about 15,000 gold in order to level up. The reason for this is just because you need a lot of dust, shards, and crystals, and they're all a little bit expensive. On my server, they're actually generally cheaper than the average. However, I am using the NA region average, which has the prices a little bit expensive. But that makes the only downside to enchanting is that crafting cost to level it up. However, 15,000 gold is not that bad, especially for what you're going to be getting. Now, the reason why enchanting is so good is 
I mean, everybody needs enchants. If you are somebody who is doing current content, every single time you get a new weapon, a new chest piece, a new ring, a new trinket, continue, continue, so on and so on, you're going to have to buy a new enchant with it. So you cannot reuse enchants. So if I, let's say, have an eye level 200 chest piece, I upgrade to a 207, that means I have to go buy an enchant. Then let's say two days later, I get a 210 piece, which once again, I have to go buy myself a new enchant. So every single time somebody is upgrading a slot of their gear, that requires an enchant, they are going to have to re-buy that one. So they are always in need, especially during 9.1, where the item level cap has increased, new gear is dropping, and everybody is trying to prep all of their alts and their main characters right now. In the past two weeks, I have sold 675 items, and each enchant profits anywhere between 50 to 100 gold each, which on the low end brings us to about 33,000 gold, and on the high end, we see about 67,000 gold. So like I said before, it's kind of like the alchemy, where you're spending a little bit more at the beginning, however, your profit totals are a little bit more on the expensive side instead of something like the leatherworking side. So enchanting is probably one of my favorite things. Yes, I do feel like a lot of people kind of shy away from enchanting because they look on the auction house and see enchant selling for 300 to 600 gold. However, if your crafting cost is 150 gold or 300 gold, then selling 20 of them adds up really quick with that profit margin. So yes, enchanting, you're not selling those big ticket 50,000 gold items. However, in the long term, as you sell a lot of them every single week, you're going to see that big profit pile up. And lastly, you also can enchant materials. You can create enchanted lightless silk, enchanted alethium, as well as the enchanted heavy callus hide, which you can either flip right onto the auction house, or you can use it and pair it with your other profession. So that is the reason why enchanting also works so well. And another little tip is if you put enchanting on your main character and you do current content every single time you finish a daily, you get a random item drop or you do a raid or something and you upgrade a gear every single time you get that useless piece of gear instead of vendoring it you can actually disenchant it because it's soul bound just disenchant it and then you will actually get free materials which you can turn into either enchants or you can just sell it on the auction house so that's one of the best perks of enchanting i always recommend it in total but also recommending it on a main character can help you kind of get that bonus materials every time you just play WoW in general. But that would be my second favorite on the list, and we are now going to go into my top spot on this tier list. And the top spot of this tier list is going to be tailoring. Probably a lot of people, if you guys watch my previous videos, if you guys hang out in the Discord, or if you watch my streams on Twitch, you probably are not surprised by this. I really love tailoring. It is my favorite profession, I always recommend it to everybody, and that is just because it is so cheap and easy to use. Now, of course, all of these professions rely on your server, so possibly tailoring could almost be the worst on your server. It really just depends, but I'm going to walk you through it. So, like we always mention, leveling up cost is on the low end. The only thing you need is a little bit of thread, a little bit of silk, and some shrouded cloth. And adding that all up, the full cost of leveling up tailoring is only going to be about 4,000 gold. So, 4,000, that is about a third of what alchemy and enchanting cost, and it is very, very cheap. So, 4,000 gold to invest in tailoring, pretty good. The next thing that you have as an advantage over the other armor crafting professions, the reason why I like tailoring so much over, let's say, leatherworking, blacksmithing, or jewelry crafting is because you have bags. No, all of those professions, you know, can craft those crafted items, that crafted gear that people equipped. However, tailoring also have bags, which can make up lots and lots of gold. Now, just to put that into perspective, they are pretty cheap to make, but they sell fast. In the last two weeks, I have sold about 353 bags, and that is anywhere between 20 to 60 gold profit every single bag sold, and so that brings on the low end about 7,000 gold in, and on the high end, that is about 21,000 gold. So bags is kind of the side point of tailoring. Of course, it is an armor crafting profession, so 
most people are going to be focusing on crafting the armor, but bags, I mean, bringing in 21,000 gold profit, and that's a side hustle of tailoring is amazing. So that is why I really think tailoring pulls ahead over leatherworking and blacksmithing. And of course, like I stated before, with the leatherworking, there is novice gear, crafter's marks three gear, as well as the chained aisle pieces. So as you level up tailoring, you will unlock the novice crafter's marks, which you can just pair with that green and that blue gear, and it will get you that novice gear, which you can sell. Generally, novice gear on my server, I can craft it for about 50 gold for the green ones and about 150 gold for the blue ones, and I can sell the blue pieces of gear for about 1,500 gold, and I sell the green novice gear for anywhere between 500 to 800 gold. So... Turning 40 gold into 500 gold is huge. It has huge profit margins, and doing this with a whole set of gear can bring you in a ton of income because normally people buy the whole sets. So, novice gear is probably one of the best things, like I said before. Then, of course, if you are a current content player and have your reputation inside of Corthia, you can pick up the Crafter's Marks 3 and the Chained Isle Crafter's Marks. As long as you were honored with Death's Advanced and you are tier 4 with the Archivist Codex. So, in general, tailoring is probably the favorite of mine. Also, another huge perk with tailoring is that it is compatible with enchanting. What I mean is that you can craft, let's say, Shrouded Cloth Bracers, where it only costs you maybe 10 gold to craft. You can send it over to your enchanter or just disenchant it on your character, and you can turn that one bracer that's worth maybe 10 gold, and then you can turn it into a soul dust or possibly two soul dust, which are worth, you know, 15 to 20 gold each. So, there are many, many shuffles that you can do combining these two professions, which is why I put them at one and two. I personally have these two on my main character, and to make my crafting cost even lower for enchanting, I combined it with getting my own soul dust by just doing a simple little flip by crafting cheap bracers, then disenchanting them for my own self. So that is a great way to either shuffle items onto the auction house to sell or use them yourself to cut down on crafting cost. But in general, tailoring is definitely my favorite and I would love to hear what you guys think about this tier list. Lots of people probably have their best professions and their favorites, so please let me know what exactly is your favorite profession and if you agree or disagree with anything on this list, I would love to know. Now, I do believe it is important to eventually get all of the professions because you never know when something is going to start being a lot more profitable than another profession, and you don't want to miss out on that, so definitely having all of them just ready to be picked up and used would be very beneficial, but of course that means you have to level alts, and not everybody wants to do that or has the time to do that. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more of an idea on what to focus on right now in 9.1 with Shadowlands, and this can help you kind of start building that alt army if you haven't already. But Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below, or you can message it inside my Discord. It is free to join. Anybody can do so. We have about 1,400 members, which is insane, so you can find that link in the description. Also, like I stated before, I do live stream four days a week, so you can catch me live during the night if that's something you want to come check out. But in general, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like comment, and possibly subscribe if you enjoyed, and of course, everybody, have a good day.